So in continuing our conversation about immunosuppressive drugs, well, let's talk about compounds that suppress the T-cell response. T-cells are central to the immune system. Helper T-cells are required to activate B-cells as well as cytotoxic T-cells. Um, cytotoxic T-cells are damaging to the body. They will kill cells. So there are a number of instances where one would want to suppress T-cells, keep their activation low. Um, again, this could occur for individuals who have uh, organ transplants because many times uh, tissue rejection is mediated by alloreactive T-cells, or it could be um, for individuals who have an autoimmune disorder in which T-cells are playing a role in the autoimmune response. So let's talk about a number of different compounds that suppress T-cells. And all of these might be used in different instances. They all have uh, pluses and minuses. Um, so they're not all used for all types of hypersensitivity reactions, they're used in particular ones where they have been deemed uh, successful. So right now, let's look at it. Here's a T-cell, a general T-cell with a T-cell receptor. It's got the T-cell receptor alpha and beta proteins. I've drawn in some CD3 proteins and the zeta protein, which is the intracellular protein uh, that you know, becomes phosphorylated on ITAMs. And when the T-cell receptor engages a peptide MHC complex, the T-cell receptor will send a signal to the nucleus so that T-cell will activate. So there are many compounds that inhibit T-cells, some of which inhibit signaling from the T-cell receptor. And one compound which we've spoken about previously is cyclosporin, which is a compound isolated from a soil fungus. And that compound uh, primarily affects T-cells, signaling from the T-cell receptor to a, into the nucleus to, to either activate that T-cell or trigger the T-cell's effector function. So cyclosporin can suppress both um, naive T cells from activating as well as effector T cells. There's another compound that is similar in function to cyclosporin called uh, tacrolimus, which is another compound uh, isolated from a soil bacterium, actually this time, also inhibits signaling from the T cell receptor. So again, can inhibit the activation of naive T cells or can inhibit the um, effector function of T cells. Uh, the next compound we'll talk about inhibits signaling from the IL-2 receptor. If you recall, IL-2 is a cytokine, uh, and one of its main functions is to signal uh, in a paracrine or an autocrine manner from T cells, either to themselves or to neighboring T cells, and induces proliferation of T cells. So if we inhibit the uh, signal from the IL-2 receptor, we're going to inhibit uh, the proliferation of T cells. And there's a compound called rapamycin, uh, also known as serolimus, which is isolated from a soil bacterium. And that inhibits the signaling from the IL-2 receptor uh, into the T cell. So that would inhibit the, pro the proliferation of T cells that occurs during T cell activation. Um, what else uh, is there? Well, if you recall, to activate a naive T cell, you need engagement between the B7 molecule present on the surface of antigen presenting cells, specifically professional antigen presenting cells, and the CD28 molecule on the surface of T cells. So this is an interaction, protein-protein interaction, that's required to activate naive T cells. So scientists have been able to exploit this interaction, blocking it, and therefore inhibiting the um, activation of naive T cells. They've done this by exploiting a natural signal in the body. So there's another molecule uh, on the surface of some cells called CTLA4. That is very similar to B7 in that it also binds CD28, but it does the opposite of B7. When CTLA4, the protein found on the surface of some cells, which we won't go into, when that binds CD28, that actually inhibits CD28 signaling into the nucleus. So it's blocking the B7 from interacting with CD28, and the uh, T cells don't activate. So this is a, a natural way in the body for uh, the body to regulate the activation of T cells. So the body has a natural way to suppress the activation of naive T cells, and that's by using CTLA4 to bind CD28. So scientists have known this for a while and decided, well, what if we made 
a synthetic version of CTLA-4, and that's exactly what they did. So there's a protein um, that uh, is now a drug. It's called Belatarcept, and it is a protein composed of this extracellular portion of CTLA-4. So when this protein is administered, it will bind CD28 molecules. So it will prevent CD28 from binding B7 and therefore prevent activation of naive T cells. So these are one, two, three different mechanisms to inhibit T cell, T cell either function or T cell activation, or both. And again, why wouldn't you know, we want to suppress T cell function? Uh, it could be because of uh, autoimmune reactions that are um, uh, responsible for damaging self because the T cells have decided to recognize self for some reason. So some individuals who have autoimmune disorders, they take these compounds or individuals who have uh, other types of hypersensitivity reactions, um, either allergic reactions or in the case of organ transplantation. If we want to suppress those alloreactive T cells that might recognize the donor organ as foreign, we can just suppress T cell responses. So these compounds work on both CD4 and CD8 cells. So they're going to prevent T CD8 cells from killing cells. They'll prevent CD4 cells from helping other cells. They'll reduce inflammation and B cell activation. Um, so these compounds can suppress the T cell response. Uh, isn't that going to suppress the immune system? And the answer is yes. These drugs do suppress the normal immune cell function of T cells. So individuals who take these compounds uh, will be more susceptible to infection. But that's a cost for um, wanting to suppress the immune system because the immune system is hurting the body.